Hey viewers, both new and old, welcome to GTech. And today I've got a little bit different of a video for you guys. I was assigned to write a persuasive speech for one of my college classes. I wanted to persuade my audience to perform self-tech repairs. So if something like their cell phone were to break, they could go and repair it themselves as opposed to spending much, much more money at a dedicated repair center. And I had a pretty crazy idea. What if I could email the man himself who spent years and years tearing down smartphones and laptops and tablets all on YouTube, jerry-rig everything? Just kind out of the blue, I shot him an email saying, hey, I'm a college student. Do you think I could interview you for some questions? And when I actually got a response back, I was pretty floored. He agreed to it. To me, that's like talking to a celebrity. So a few emails later, and I ended up sending him some questions, and he made a video response answering the questions. I'm just gonna let that video play out so you guys can see his responses. So <laughs> take it away, Zach. So my name is Zach Nelson. I run the YouTube channel Jerry Rig Everything. I am 32 years old and uh, I've been doing this YouTube thing for about eight years. Started off my YouTube channel doing uh, kind of like Jeeps and motorcycles and I realized that if I wanted to reach a larger audience I had to start doing projects on things that more people uh, cared about or more people owned. And so that's why I switched more into like the technology space. Cell phones, cars, like electric vehicles, uh, things like that because more people are interested in them. So the reason I started my whole YouTube channel uh, adventure or my you know career was because my Jeep broke down. The shop wanted a thousand dollars to fix it and so I looked on YouTube and I found a guy who who could fix my exact same problem for $80 instead of a thousand. So I messaged him and I was like, you know, why are you making these awesome videos? Like, why are you taking time out of your day to help people out? And he said his reason was to decrease world suck to make the world a better place. And I thought that was like, you know, super noble of him and super cool. And I kind of wanted to do the same thing. The overall, like the reason I got started was to help people out fixing their own things. Ever since I was a little kid, I've been asked to fix things uh, for friends and family. It's a fairly common occurrence and usually I'm successful, sometimes not so much. Uh, luckily, my family and friends have been pretty respectful. With any relationship, you don't want to be the moocher. You don't want to be the person who's always asking. And so I've been, you know, obviously there's every now and then there's that one person who doesn't quite understand that you have to give something to get something. Um, usually there's a pretty fair exchange going on. You know, like I fix your phone, you make me cookies. Like it's a it's a win-win for both of us. And so that's how me and my close friends and family have operated for the last, you know, since I was a little kid. But I haven't been doing repairs for the general public, you know, unless I know you personally um, for like the last six or so. It just it stopped being, um, you know, cost effective for me. Like my time was more worth working on the next video than it was trying to, you know, fix someone's device um, for profit. Plus, like as I'm working on my YouTube channel, it's very easy to show, you know, hundreds of thousands of people how to fix a phone than it is to fix one phone for one person and not film it. The YouTube channel has become more of a priority for me for you know the last eight years. So with the right to repair law, I see things from both sides. I see why manufacturers would want to keep people out of their um, you know their electronics. Like for one, you know they make money by the repairs, and they also don't want people damaging them. You know I get this all the time with my YouTube channel. It's like you know someone goes to fix a phone, fails and then makes the phone look like they never got in it in the first place and then try to warranty it, which is like, you know, then the brand loses out on a ton of money because that fraud they're committing, you know, the person uh, who tried to fix their phone but failed. So there has to be like some kind of middle ground where like it is possible for people to fix their phones, but give them the proper tools and the parts and everything like that. But also, you know, if you do try to fix your own stuff and you break it, I don't think the manufacturer should be responsible for that. It's hard to, you know, side with one particular, you know, with the manufacturers or the right to repair people. There needs to be a middle ground uh, between both of them. But if I had to pick a side, I would be like, you know, it should be okay for most people to fix the stuff they legally purchased in the first place. Now, as far as encouraging people to fix their own stuff, I always say, you know, if you can, great. I feel like most people know their skill level. They know whether they're gonna be able to um, attempt something like this. Now, with a cell phone, if you've never worked a screwdriver in your life, there's a very good chance you're just gonna mess more things up if you try to open it up. But I feel like most people are logical enough to think about that beforehand and uh, know their skill level before they attempt anything drastic. The average person is not gonna go attempt, you know, an engine swap when their skill level is 
barely able to change a tire. Uh, lately, I've been thinking, you know, for the last year or so, uh, my thing has been uh, recycling and making sure that, you know, at the end of a device's lifespan, it's able to be recycled safely. Manufacturers aren't planning for that in the future. Everything has a finite lifespan. Phones last two, three, four years, and then you know, they need to be recycled. If the phone is constructed in a way that's detrimental, you know, but, but the battery's gonna explode if you try to take it apart, then it's not gonna be recycled and it's just a lose-lose for everybody. That's my biggest gripe is like, yeah, make it repairable, but also make it recyclable in the future. I think manufacturers right now have kind of found that good line of uh, repairability. The most repairable phone in the world would be, you know, all you need is a screwdriver to get inside of it. But at that point, then you don't have any waterproofing and that waterproofing helps keep phones alive longer, I think, than um, making it repairable by just a screwdriver. So I would say the biggest thing lately for me has been, you know, manufacturers, it's super easy to just put pull tabs underneath the battery. That would make the phone more recyclable and make the phone more repairable and it costs like a penny for the manufacturers. Is D-Brain really full of robots? <laughs> I can't answer that question. Um, for me, I like, you know, I like having a routine in the mornings and so it's like, since I'm in front of a computer, like where I'm at right now, this is my office, I have two big monitors behind me. I'm in front of a computer all day and so like part of my, to keep myself sane is to just go to the gym in the mornings and like just be around other people even though I never talk to anybody. And to just, you know, I usually spend hour and a half, two hours there while I'm answering emails, just walking on a treadmill, just, you know, that's my routine to get me started and out of bed in the mornings. After you develop a habit, it's really easy to keep it. So the Afro was something I had back in high school, loved it, uh, but you know, genetics kind of takes over at some point and uh, I'm fine with how things are now. Obviously, if there's some kind of like miracle cure in the future, you know, I'm down for that, but I'm also, you know, I've had friends who spend like thousands of dollars trying to keep their hair and it's like, you know, Life goes on. All right, George, I think that's it. Okay, thanks, man. Thanks for reaching out. No, thank you, Zach, for taking the time out of your day to answer some questions for me. Seeing your email honestly made my day. It completely floored me, and I'm so, so grateful. I don't know if I've said it enough, especially in the emails. I'm so very grateful that you were able to take the time out of your day to do this thing for me. Because not only did you give me the permission to make a pretty cool video out of it, but now I'm getting help with a college assignment. So it's a win-win situation for me. But otherwise, I think that's gonna do it for now. So if you like this video, you know what to do. And if you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure to get sub below, because I love making this stuff for you guys. And as always, have a good one.